So you send hundreds of software engineering applications. You get ghosted by most of them and the few that do respond either reject you soon or they give you an interview which is absolutely killer that you end up failing anyway. Here's the truth, most of you are doing it completely wrong. It took me 126 applications before I actually received my first offer in tech. So let me share with you the mistakes that I made along the journey so that you don't end up doing the same as I did. If I wanted a software engineering internship or grad job in 2025, I wouldn't just mass apply like you've probably been told in the past, but instead I would focus on a strategy that would actually almost guarantee results. So today in this video, let's go through that and I'll show you the step by step process and tell you the truth that other creators just probably don't want to tell you. We at Meta are going to have an AI that can effectively be a sort of mid-level engineer that you have at your company. First, let's actually talk about the harsh reality of landing that tech job in 2025 especially. Most people think that applying to hundreds and hundreds of jobs will actually get them hired. But the truth is that you're ending up wasting your time when there's a much easier way. The reality is your CV is being filtered out by an ATS system before it actually even reaches a human for review. Companies get hundreds, if not thousands of applications per role. So the odds are actually not even in your favor to begin with. So the question then is, how do you actually land that first role in tech in 2025? This is the exact thing that I would do differently compared to others. First of all, what you wanna make sure you do is that you pick the right companies. I would actually split those companies into three different categories. One is those big tech companies such as Fang, Two is mid-sized companies such as startups, for example. And then number three is those non-tech companies that still actually have tech roles. Big tech companies such as Google, Microsoft, Amazon, they have really well-structured programs for new grads and interns. The only issue here is that you're up against a lot of other people, which means that the odds are not in your favor with big tech companies. Mid-sized companies and other tech startups, they're a really good place to learn on the job. You won't have much of a structured program, but you will have more opportunities and more responsibilities to pick up more work. It will definitely be a more hands-on experience, but the issue here is that there's not many of those roles available. I think non-tech companies with tech roles is the dark horse in all of these types of companies. The great thing is that they have a lot of structured programs because it is a big company. The only downside is that you're not in a tech focused company, so you may not be at the forefront of innovation, but you definitely will be still getting a good experience and a good hands-on approach to learning. My one piece of advice for all three of these companies is don't put all of your eggs in one basket. I know a lot of us, especially coming out of school or during school, dream of getting into those big tech companies. But the thing is that there's so many different companies out there that you could be really applying to a mix of all three. Step two now, and let's talk about your CV. Your CV is your first impression and your first impression is your last impression. So you need to make sure that your CV is up to date and is actually readable to a human. What I mean by that is a lot of people just jumble up all of their experiences and don't really have a structured layout to their CV, which means that the recruiter isn't even bothering to read it. Your CV needs to be concise, impactful and have those keywords, which means that you're getting past the automated system so that you are going in for a review. So this is what I would do to make sure that my CV is optimized. Number one is that I would stick to a single page. In that single page format, I'll definitely make sure that I'm quantifying everything. For example, let's say you built a website for a group project at university. I wouldn't just say that I built a website. I would say something like I built a full stack website with X technology and framework and it receives Y customers per day. Something like this actually puts your work into context and is a way to make yourself stand out compared to other people. With it being an internship or a grad role, obviously you may not have experience. I wouldn't put my part-time job on here if it's not relevant. I would instead use projects to show what my experience is. Step number three is a huge mistake that I see people make. See, most people would just apply online and wait to either be rejected or accepted. Whereas what I'll do differently here is I'll make sure that I'm networking with as many people as possible. You wanna network, but you wanna do it strategically. You don't wanna just go to every single person, but you do wanna make sure you're going to relevant people in the industry. You don't actually need to go into in-person tech events, although it is recommended. You can do most of this online. And one platform which I love is LinkedIn. LinkedIn, when used correctly, is such a powerful tool. You really wanna make sure you're optimizing your LinkedIn profile. So have your description set up, have your about page set up and have some experiences listed on your profile. Make sure you engage with industry professionals on LinkedIn. Make sure you comment, like, repost other people's posts and just be active on LinkedIn instead of having sort of like a ghost profile. 
chances are if you have a really good LinkedIn profile, recruiters will actually be messaging you instead of you looking for a job for other companies. So you've got this far, right? You've done your CV, you've made some projects, you've optimized your LinkedIn, you've found a role. How do you actually land that first role now? This is the bit where most people fail because they're not willing to put in that extra time that sets them apart from other candidates. There's two types of interviews that you need to nail. There's a technical and there's the behavioral. Don't focus on one more than the other. A lot of people will tell you to just do things like leak code. Leak code is not going to get you a job. And chances are when you're up with other people who have got as far as you, the recruiters already know they can code. So how do you set yourself apart? you make sure you kill your behavioral interview. There's some questions which will come up on every single behavioral interview, no matter which company you actually apply for. One of those is tell me about yourself, which a lot of people fail here because they just think it's friendly conversation. It's not, you're being tested here, so prepare for that answer. Number two is why is this company? You have to show you're passionate of the role and the company. You can't just turn up there with no information about the company and just think that you're going to get the role. And third type of question that always comes up in a behavioral interview is something related to a group project. For example, can you tell me what you did in X group project? For the technical interview, really look at those easy and medium questions. Here's the secret that I've been waiting till the end of the video to tell you. A lot of people will follow these steps, but few of you will actually implement this secret that I'm about to give you. That secret is building an online presence and creating content about the industry that you're passionate about. This is a complete game changer because now you have people reaching out to you to give you a job instead of you looking out and finding a job from other companies. So how would you actually put this into practice? A lot of people find it a bit cringe or a bit scary because they don't want to put themselves out there but you have to get over that and just upload your first piece of content online. Make a YouTube video documenting your process. Make a TikTok, make an Instagram reel. This is how you actually build your online presence. What most people don't know is that recruiters are Googling your name. When they see your application and you've got through all of those stages, including the interview, they'll Google your name and they'll see your social presence. If you've got a solid social presence, you're almost guaranteed the job. So that's the step-by-step -step process I would use to set myself apart from others. But what's the biggest mistake that people are making? The biggest mistake people are making, even if they followed it step-by-step -step and not miss anything, is giving up after a few rejections. I know it sounds cliche because a lot of people will tell you, but every rejection is actually a learning opportunity. And when you get your first role, you'll be looking back at that and thinking, yeah, I actually learned something from that. So if I had to start over and land that software engineering internship or grad role, I would do these things that would make me different compared to other people. It's not just about mass applications. That is not going to get you a role. You need something which sets you apart. You need a unique selling point. Internships aren't just about skill. They're about standing out. I guarantee that you will get a role if you follow these steps consistently. If you found this video helpful, check out my channel for more content about software engineering and coding. I make weekly videos on tech and I also post on Instagram and TikTok as well. I don't sell any courses. I don't sell you anything. I just have passion because I want to see you guys succeed in this industry. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video next week.